Love One Out Conference Guide Addressing, Understanding, and Preventing Homosexuality in Youth Mission Statement Our Mission To provide a Christ-centered, comprehensive conference which will enlighten, empower, and equip families, church and youth leaders, educators, counselors, policymakers, and the gay community on the truth about homosexuality and its impact on culture and youth. Today, the onslaught, today the homosexual issue surrounds our culture on all sides. We cannot escape the onslaught of gay propaganda that seeks to influence our churches, schools, businesses, and neighborhoods. There is a great deal of misinformation being spread that says homosexuality is a biological imperative and that change and freedom is not possible. Children as young as five years old are taught to believe that homosexuality is simply another alternative lifestyle op option equivalent to heterosexuality. Increasingly, churches across the nation are embracing and affirming homosexual unions and blessed gay partnerships. Scientists tell us that genetics determine sexuality and that anyone who seeks to speak out is homophobic and intolerant. For the variety of messages, many people are confused about what to believe. Focus on the Family has developed this conference to clear up confusion and answer your questions about the complex topic of homosexuality. Sessions will provide real answers from a compassionate, biblical point of view. You'll hear from experts who will provide you with tools to understand and proactively deal with this issue. We affirm that God d deeply loves every homosexual. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God, and we can find wholeness and healing through a redeeming relationship with Jesus Christ. He invites everyone to come to him. God does have the power to change any life. We pray everyone who struggles will turn to him and experience this kind of power of strength and love in their own lives. Heterosexuality and homosexuality. The foundation of society for the family is the marriage of a man and a woman for life. And since families are the basic building blocks of society, then it follows that society is, will be only be as strong as the relationships between men and women. Heterosexuality is fundamental to the vitality and even the existence of any society. Scripture is very clear in its condemnation of homosexual conduct, and such sin is a deviation from God's creation and design. But Dr. Dobson is quick to add that God loves the homosexual as much as any other person. Focus on the Family calls all persons to sincerely love and understand those involved in homosexuality, remembering that Jesus demonstrated far greater compassion for people caught up in sexual immorality than for religious hypocrites. Meanwhile, homosexuals are entitled to the same basic rights as other citizens. Focus on the Family stands against any movement to rob them of those rights, persecute them, deprive them of employment or housing, or harass them in any way. Nevertheless, FOCUS does take strong exception to the activist movement that seeks to gain special privileges and protected minority status for the homosexual community. There is no evidence that homosexuals are a class, as a class are discriminated against in the present society. They are not like African Americans, Hispanics, or other historically disadvantaged groups, for their identity is based on changeable behavior, not on unchangeable skin color or ethnic status. Additionally, they have far higher average, average incomes and education than most Americans, along with a significant political influence. Focus on the Family also opposes the efforts of radical homosexual social reformers who wish to redefine the family, permit homosexual marriages, adopt children, and recruit the young. This and other elements of the more radical homosexual agenda must be vigorously opposed. Further, there is no established scientific evidence that sexual orientation is genetically determined by brain structure. Recent attempts to establish such a connection have been unscientific and biased. Dr. Dobson recognizes that physiological and environmental factors may have significance within the complex amalgam of circumstances that contribute to a homosexual orientation, yet he cannot subscribe to a determinism that holds human beings to be mere biological machines. Moral choice is real, and it is central to our identity as men and women. The sin of homosexual behavior, like all sins, can be forgiven and healed by the grace revealed in the life and death of Christ. All sexual sin affects the human personality like no other sin, for sexual issues run deep in our character. 
and change is slow and uphill, but change is possible. Focus on the family has seen that by God's grace and through compassion counseling, it is sometimes possible, although always difficult, for a person to move from a homosexual to a heterosexual orientation. When the change appears impossible in an individual case, such a person is in the same position as the heterosexual single who has no prospects of marriage. They are both called by scripture to a life of sexual abstinence. These are difficult words, yet no one has the authority to change the biblical prescription on sexuality outside of marriage. Comments from past conferences and attendees. This program was absolutely fantastic. I was initially concerned that a more fundamentalist streak would be present. However, I was pleasantly surprised that this did not happen. All presentations were unbiased, balanced, well-researched, and documented. As I have come to know, Focus on the Family is an absolute quality organization. This has been the most influential conference I've ever been to. I've learned far more today than I could ever glean on my own. Thank you, conference speakers. Session descriptions. Sessions. The condition of male homosexuality. The media and others have misrepresented the causes of male homosexuality as a predetermined biological condition. The session examines the true nature of how male homosexuality develops and outlines the family dynamics that can lead to the evolution of same-sex desires. The condition of female homosexuality. Springboarding off our discussion of root causes, attendees will delve into the complex differences and relational dynamics between a young girl's search for security from her father and alienation from her mother. This session also explores how sexual abuse and violation can play a key role in the development of a lesbian identity. Reaching the homosexual, a caring perspective. Have you ever wondered what to say to an adolescent or someone you know who comes to you for help with confusion about homosexual feelings? You'll hear how one man's experience as a youth pastor provides practical tools to enable a pastor, mentor, or caregiver to come alongside a struggling individual. Can I make a difference addressing the pro-gay agenda in schools? The gay agenda is encroaching on public school classrooms across the nation. Parents, teachers, and administrators often find themselves at a loss encountering this onslaught. This session outlines action steps in confronting gay affirmative curriculum and how to counter anti-family activism in your schools. Why is what they're saying so danger teaching so dangerous? The goal of gay activists is to overhaul America with a message that homosexuality is normal and healthy. Popular television shows and elementary school classrooms are the breeding ground for a dramatic shift in how sexuality is portrayed. This multimedia presentation poignantly reveals the motives behind gay activists' influential impact on Western culture. Understanding pro-gay theology. This session takes a powerful, straightforward look at the growing acceptance of homosexuality in the evangelical community. From a unique perspective of the pro-gay Christian movement, you'll hear a clear biblical response to understanding pro-gay theology's beliefs and how to find the crucial balance between conviction and compassion in communicating with those who have embraced pro-gay theology. Help! My child is gay. Questions and answers on family dynamics. Finding out that a child, spouse, relative, or friend is homosexual can be an unwelcome surprise. You're hit with a complex combination of emotions, grief, shame, guilt, and you're flooded with questions ranging from why to what's next. Prevention of male homosexuality. Contrary to the popular myth that homosexuality is genetic, same-sex attraction is a preventable and treatable condition. Here are practical tools in directing children toward a healthy heterosexual identity and receive insights into what parents can do to safeguard their kids from those who would tell them otherwise. Questions and answers on lesbianism. Discover answers to your questions on the numerous aspects of female homosexuality. You'll hear of one woman's experience in personally overcoming lesbianism and counseling others. How should we respond? As a fitting end, for the Love One Out Conference, Joe Dallas exhorts the Christian church to passionately reach out to those within the gay community without compromising its stand on biblical truth. Well, 
Notes, The Condition of Male Homosexuality, by Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, Ph.D. Homosexuality, at its root, is not a sexual problem, it's a gender identity problem. Four gay myths. 1. 10% of the population is homosexual. 2. You're born gay. 3. Once gay, always gay. 4. Homosexuality is normal in every way. Believing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals total acceptance. Gay versus homosexual. Homosexuality as gender identity disorder. Gender identity phase, 2 to 3 years old. Androgynous phase, masculine strivings. Surrender of the protest, defensive detachment. Father salience, benevolence, strength. The classic triadic relationship, mother, father, son. Mother's role, as wife to husband, as mother to son. The physical nature of the father-son relationship. Father as mystery. Latency phase, 5 to 12 years old. Poor peer relationships. Kitchen window boy. Cross-gender behavior. Sissy boy syndrome or gender nonconformity. False self. The good little boy. Theater and acting. The physical nature of heterosexual development. Alienation from the body. Excessive modesty. Boyhood. Exhibitionism. Adulthood. Adolescence. 12 to adulthood. Erotic transitional phase, homosexual behavior as reparative drive, associated features of male homosexuality, male gender deficit, problems with assertion, sexualization of aggression, detachment from men, same-sex ambivalence, failure of the male couple. Interpreting data from gay researchers McWhorter and Madison, 1984. Search for maleness, promiscuity, short-term relationships, action steps, Identify at-risk children, adolescents, and young adults. Be concerned about boys who are showing signs of gender identity confusion, lonely, feeling like they don't fit in, alienated from male peers, lacking close relationships with their fathers. Notes. The Condition of Female Homosexuality. Jane Boyer. Inner Vow. A decision or promise you make to yourself on a subconscious level for self-protection. God made little girls with a need to bond with their mothers. You cannot kill a God-given need. Man makes God in his own image. Sigmund Freud. Dad models to us who God is. There is no such thing as a perfect dad, and we end up with a faulty perception of God. If you had an absent dad on a heart level, you have an absent God. If dad is critical and rejecting, you will perceive God as critical and rejecting. If dad was not the giver of good things, you will not perceive God as the giver of good things. One of the most common difficulties in relating to God as a father and Jesus as a man when you are a woman who has been abused and hurt by men. Fundamental to the healing process from homosexuality. How do you perceive God on the heart level? Acceptance by God is not based on performance. There is nothing we can do to earn God's love. We can't be do, or say anything to get more of God's love. We just need to be able to receive it. Example, radio transmitter. If the radio is broken, the problem is not with the transmitter. The problem is the radio's ability to receive. God's love is perfect in the transmission, but we have damaged receptor sites in our hearts, and they need to be healed. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Psalm 27.10 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.1 Example, crush a $10 bill in your hand. It becomes defensive, broken, crushed, torn, and damaged, but its value is the same. We are defective, broken, crushed, torn, and damaged, but we are no less valuable to God. Theology, head knowledge, what we know about God in our heads. Neology Healing reality, how we feel that God feels about us when we're on our knees. 2 Timothy 3.5, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Jeremiah 6.13-14, prophets and priests alike, all practice deceit. They dress the wounds of my people as though it were not serious. Jesus longs for us to go to him with our brokenness. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8.32, same-sex attraction is a symptom not an identity, deep wounds and brokenness inside, result of unmet needs for love, acceptance, gender identification, and validation. God calls us to radical obedience. Now, why? God will never reveal more truth about himself. 
until you have obeyed what you know already. Oswald Chambers Don't wait until you've healed before you obey. Obey first, and you will be healed. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that bought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4-5 Your brokenness is not who you are. Painful acknowledgment to brokenness is the prerequisite to wholeness. We must first acknowledge that we are broken. Same-sex parent, opposite-sex parent, and God. Bonding, attachment, love, acceptance, dependency, needs, self-image, secure, gender, and identity. Role of same-sex parent, to plant gender identification in child. Mother mirrors femininity to daughter. Daughter will either embrace or reject the feminine. Roles of opposite sex parent. Father reaffirms femininity in his daughter. Failure to affirm can cause lifelong confusion with sexual identity. Lesbian relationships seem to offer the nurturing that should have come from a from mother. Seem to promise protection against further aggression from men can seem a lot safer after the trauma of sexual abuse. Same-sex parent, opposite-sex parent, wall, wall, God, bonding, attachment, love, acceptance, dependency, needs, self-image, secure gender, identity, perceived rejection, shame, guilt, poor self-image, identity, confusion, craving, hunger, whole and soul, homosexual condition. We don't find our true selves, our true identity, by looking for it in other people. We find our true selves by looking for him, the master affirmer, the healing process, repentance of sin, radical obedience to God's word, forgiving those who have hurt us, allowing Jesus to encounter our wounds with his love, grace, and mercy. John 4, 10 through 14. Notes, Reaching the Homosexual, A Caring Perspective, Mike Haley, Introduction, Calling versus Heart, Statistics, Eight is up 77% in the last two years. 68% girls and 86% boys have sex before age 20. Fewer than 50% report condom use. Three million teens contract an ASTD yearly. Support must be maintained from qualified people, parents, educators, youth leaders, and clinicians. The whole person model, intellectual, moral, spiritual, physical, emotional, social, Despite its gradual depathologicalization by the American Psychiatric Association since 1974, homosexuality continues to be a topic of clinical relevance in child and adolescent psychiatry. The reason is that homosexuality has remained a difficult issue for parents and their children. Meyer Ballberg, 1983, page 489. Root issues and warning signs. Rejection, shame, fear, envy, isolation. My special friend, open rebellion, approach, prefer to remain confidential, appropriate reactions, adolescents inquiring about others who are different, questions disguised to elicit response by adult, comments made about sexual preference, response back about maturing in their time, lack of social acceptance, parental reaction, sexual encounters. Notes. Can I make a difference? Addressing the pro-gay agenda in schools. Peter LaBarbera. What you can do to confront the gay agenda in schools. Get informed. Go right to the source. Homosexual education activist goals in their own words. G. Elson. Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network. Person Project. Public education regarding sexual orientation nationally. PFLAG. Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. Gay Ideology 101. The unchangeable orientation, like race and left-handedness, is a myth they can't admit. Homosexuality and health, debunking the safety argument. Get the facts on health and social risks of the gay behavior identification. Pro-family groups dealing with homosexuality and education. Focus on the family and other groups. AFTAH, AFTA, resource sheet, Americans for Truth about Homosexuality. Know your school, ask questions, build relationships with educators, informational request letter, after sample provided, helps you get information, shows educators you are concerned, 
It is proactive, not reactive. Don't assume educators will be forthright. Politeness and respect count. Don't fit their religious right stereotype. Don't assume private equals safe. Relevance for homeschoolers. Parental rights is key. You are the boss, not the enemy. Get involved. Building a grassroots network. Educate, educate, educate. Have a showing of its elementary in your home. Build a mailing list. Phone tree. Quick response network. Build relationships with educators, school board members, and local government leaders. What GLSCN is doing. Attend school board meetings and write letters. Educate the decision makers. Get students involved. They will carry the day. A necessity because Gay Straight Alliance school clubs are here to stay. Crosses authority barrier. Christianity in action. Really standing for the truth and love. Framing the issue. You cannot promote homosexuality in the name of safety. We don't promote smoking. So why are they promoting dangerous sexual identities? Language counts. Gay, orientation, and other deceptive terms that advance the homosexual agenda. You can teach kids to be decent without promoting homosexuality as normal and healthy. Proper role of schools. Failing at basics. No time for political correctness. Confirming youngsters in immoral and unhealthy identities especially applies to middle and high schools. GLBT, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, and questioning youth. PFLAG booklet, supporting our trans children. What is a gay youth anyway? Adolescent immaturity. Average coming out age continues to decline. Confusing children especially applies to elementary school kids. How can you talk about homosexuality without mentioning sex? Disingenuous. Manipulating young, impressionable minds. You can teach kids anything. Why is just one side of this controversial issue being discussed in schools? Gay activist intolerance. Viewpoint discrimination. The Rob Downs case in California. Flouting parents' rights. A moral issue best discussed at home. Some strategies that work. Insist on balance. Rob Downs case. There are at least two sides to this issue. Bring in formal homosexuals. Separation of church and state. The other side is using religious rhetoric. Are you saying gay viewpoint is the official viewpoint at this school? Stop singling out groups. Protect all your students against harassment. Preemptive strike. Creative approaches. Boycott Gay Pride Day. Protest on gay on day of gay propaganda exercise. Safe sexuality group to counter GSAs, Christian pro-family club, club in school. Off-campus education session speaker. Parental rights legislation countering sexual orientation measures. Sample letter to school principal. Dear Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, my son daughter is enrolled at Springfield Middle School for the upcoming school year. As parents, we have watched with growing concern as schools across the country have advanced homosexual and other alternative sexual identities as normative to impressionable students, Af often working hand-in-hand -hand with pro-gay special interest groups. We would prefer that the sensitive issue of homosexuality not to be taught at Springfield middle, but rather left to parents like us to discuss with our own children in the way that we see fit. However, since there are two sides to the debate over homosexuality, we hope that you would agree that one viewpoint, the pro-gay side, should be not be affirmed at the expense of another, nor should a public school like Springfield Middle formally ally itself with homosexual activist groups like the Gay Lesbian Straight Education Network, GLSDN, or PFLAG, parents, friends, and families of lesbians and gay, these organizations routinely vilify people and groups like us who defend a more traditional belief that homosexual behavior is wrong and unhealthy. I trust you agree that our right to impart our beliefs about sexual morality to our children should not be undermined by politicized lessons in the classroom for which we have no control. We regret that we have to write this letter at all, and in no way do we wish to impugn you or the administration at Springfield Middle. Nevertheless, we respectfully ask that you would respond to the following questions so that we can be assured that activist notions about homosexuality and gender are not being taught to my son or daughter without our knowledge. Does Middle Springfield Middle work with representatives of PFLAG, GLSCN, or any other pro-homosexual organizations in the formulation or implementation of school programs and or curricula dealing with sexual orientation issues? 
Does Springfield Middle allow its teacher to discuss sexual orientation or gender identity issues in the classroom? Have Springfield Middle School teachers, administrators, or counselors undergone teacher training on sexual orientation or gender identity issues? If so, could you provide details about this training, e.g., what groups created or sponsored them, etc.? Has Springfield Middle ever invited a representative of a pro-homosexual group such as GLSCN and PFLAG to address its students or faculty on questions relating to sexual orientation or tolerance? If so, was a representative of the other side of this debate also allowed to give a, rep a presentation? Please give details about any presentations. Are homosexual, bisexual, or transgender teachers allowed to discuss their sexual orientation or gender identity openly in the classroom? Does Springfield Middle or the school district have a written non-discrimination policy dealing with sexual orientation? If so, please supply us with a written copy of the policy and any faculty administration directives intended to implement it. Does Springfield Middle officially support inclusive curricula that affirms homosexuality as normative, even in unrelated subjects such as English and history? If one of your teachers were to use a gay-affirming curriculum, would he or she be required to submit it to your administration for approval? Are parents notified if such curricula is planned to be used? Does Springfield Middle allow so-called gay-straight alliances student clubs that affirm homosexuality? If so, are any school time or resources used to support such clubs? Please give details about that and any school directives related to such clubs. Thank you for taking the time to read and respond to these questions. Again, I am sorry we have come to the point in our society in which we need to request such information for our son or daughter's protection. I can be reached at home at 555-579. Sincerely, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, 546 McGill Avenue, dot, dot, dot. Notes. Why is what they're teaching so dangerous? Mike Haley. The first order of business is desensitization of the American public concerning gay and gay rights. To desensitize the public is to help it view homosexuality with indifference instead of with keen emotion. The overhauling of straight America. You can for gut trying to persuade the masses that homosexuality is a good thing, but if only you can get them to think that it is just another thing with a shrug of their shoulders, then your battle for legal and social rights is virtually won. Marshall K. Kirk and Orestes Hill Guide Magazine, November 1987. Any campaign to accomplish this turnaround should do six things. Talk about, one, talk about gays and gayness as loudly as and as often as possible. Two, portray gays as victims, not as aggressive challengers. Three, give protectors a just cause. Four, make gays look good. Five, make the victimizers look bad. Six, solicit funds. Talk about gays and gayness as loudly and as often as possible. The principle behind this advice is simple. Almost any behavior begins to look normal if you are exposed to enough of it at close quarters and among your acquaintances, says the overhauling of straight America. Close quarters equals home. Among your acquaintances equals parents and siblings. Close quarters equals classroom. Among your acquaintances equals classmates. The experiences of pleasure creates powerful behavior-shaping incentives. For this reason, when biological impulses, especially the sexual ones, are not at least partially resisted, trained, and bought under a civilizing influence of culture and will, the pressure to seek their immediate fulfillment becomes deeply embedded in the neural network of the brain. What starts out relatively free becomes less so. J. Satin over MD, homosexuality and the politics of truth. Many factors can actually lead a straight youngster into homosexual behavior, such as curiosity, loneliness, need for attention, and desire for a sense of belonging. Some boys idealize other boys due to personal sense of masculine inadequacy. This is Cade Zucker and S. Bradley, gender identity disorder and psychosexual problems in children and adolescents. Some pursue gay relationships because they find a sense of protection and male affection, which they do not get in their own family relationships. J. Nicolosi, Ph.D., Reparative Therapy of Male Homosexuality. Portray gays as victims, not as aggressive challengers. In any campaign to win over the public, gays must be cast as victims in need of protection so that straights will be inclined by reflex to assume the role of protector by overhauling of straight America. Gay youth account for 30% of all teen suicides. Paul Gibson, Gay Male and Lesbian Youth Suicide Paper. The views expressed in the paper, in the paper entitled 
gay, male, and lesbian youth suicide do not in any way represent my personal beliefs or the policy of this department. Dr. Lewis Sullivan, former Health and Human Services Secretary. Gay male and lesbian youth suicide was never subjected to the rigorous peer review that is required for publication in a scientific journal and contained no new research findings. Dr. David Schaffer, psychologist, psychologist at Columbia University and leading expert on teen suicide. Gibson skewed statistics. Primarily harvested Gibson statistics from biased homosexual sources. Used discredited findings by Dr. Kinsey that 10% of population is homosexual. Sexual behavior in the human male. Kinsey, Pomeroy, and Martin, 1948, W.B. Saunders Company, Philadelphia. Stated that 3,000 gay youth commit suicide each year when the 1998 statistical abstract of the United States say there were only 2,200 suicides among all youth. Suicide study fundamentally flawed. Assumes homosexual orientation is normal and natural. Presupposed that homosexuality is unchangeable and fixed at birth. Fails to acknowledge other psychological factors that can contribute to homosexual youth committing suicide, i.e. family problems, abuse, etc. Project 10 is a dropout prevention program that offers emotional support, information, and resources to young people who identify themselves as lesbian, gay, or bisexual, or who want accurate information about sexual orientation. Taken from website www.project10.org. Notes. Understanding pro-gay theology. Joe Dallas. Pro-gay theology. Affirms homosexuality as normal and moral through a revision of the scripture. Pro-gay theology's view of the Bible. Scriptural references to homosexuality have been mistranslated, misinterpreted, misunderstood. Pro-gay theological arguments. Social justice arguments, religious arguments, scriptural arguments, the history of the pro-gay religious movement, the movement's connection with the gay rights movement, the church's initial response to the movement, the main tenets of the pro-homosexual religious movement, the current trends in pro-homosexual churches, the general religious pro-gay arguments. Jesus said nothing about homosexuality. I'm Christian and gay. My partner and I are committed and in love. That's what counts. The specific biblical arguments created intent, Sodom revisited, Moses and homosexuality, the Levitical law, Paul and the concept of natural, Romans 1, 26-27. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way for men, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Revisionist argument. Paul was condemning people who were not truly homosexual, the behavior was not natural to them. Response, no contingency, contingency exists in this chapter to excuse any behavior mentioned here that is not associated with idolatry. See the subsequent verses in chapter 1. Paul's Greek usage of terms for men and women underscore his belief that homosexuality is biologically unnatural. Our saying, rather than anthropos for men, thelas, rather than goon for women, Paul and arsenokoit. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10 Do you know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Timothy 1, 9-10 We also know that law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for adulterers, and prevents for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine. Revisionist argument. The term arsenokoit refers to male prostitute, not homosexual. Paul did not use the Greek word commonly used for homosexual in these passages. Arsenokoit is a term coined by Paul. Response, Greek words for homosexual tended to describe specific types of homosexual behavior. Arsen means male. Koit means couch or bed with a sexual connotation. See Romans 13.13, 13, Hebrews 13.4. Paul's coinage is of terms utilized in the Septuagint 
Greek version of the Old Testament and Leviticus 18.22 and 20.13. If I were a Christian homosexual, this one question would bother me most. Am I interpreting scripture in the light of my proclivity, or should I be interpreting my proclivity in the light of scripture? Action points. Do become informed and educated about pro-gay theology and learn how to respond to it. Remember, an uneducated population is an easy target for error. Don't become overwhelmed or intimidated by pro-gay movement in your denomination. Get involved in committees studying the issue and encourage others to do the same. Do encourage your local congregation to host a seminar on pro-gay theology and its impact on the church and culture. Notes, Prevention of Male Homosexuality, Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, Ph.D. Who is the pre-homosexual child? Identifying the at-risk child and adolescent. Gender identity confusion. Alienation from same-sex peers. Lonely, anxious, depressed, maladaptive, poor relationship with father. More extreme. Explicit statement. I want to be a girl. Effeminacy and mannerisms, gestures, play. Appropriate parental reaction. Neither overreact nor ignore behavior. Is the pre-homosexual child healthy? Gay affirmative argument. Cross-gender behavior and identification is normal, natural. Efforts to modify our homosexual genocide. Sexual development. A brief review. Gender identity determines sexual orientation. Romanticize the mysterious other-than-me qualities we do not possess. Exotic becomes erotic. Boyhood effeminacy predicts adult homosexuality, 75% correlation. Is homosexuality healthy? NARTH study. 500 studies show self-destructive, maladaptive behavior associated with a gay lifestyle. Cause of pathology, social homophobia, the homosexual condition, interventions, the parental team, committed to child's best interest, that he be happy to be a boy, committed to marriage, Parents positively reflect a male-female relationship. Mother esteems masculinity. Mother, she can't do it alone. She reflects esteem for masculinity as wife to husband, as mother to son. Father, his vital role. Proactive steps. Intervention. Affirming, clear, consistent gender message. You are a boy. It's good to be a boy. Corrections. Gentle disapproval. Consequences. Teach him what's good about being a boy. Child will act more effeminate in times of stress. Possible parental errors, avoidance, paralysis, rationalization, excessive pressure on a child to conform. Fathers, father with salience, strong, equal strong, and benevolent. Problems with fathers, withdrawn, distant, or hypercritical. Narcissistic wants the boy to be for him in crisis. The importance of male friendships. Childhood same-sex peer rejection is common. Boyhood peers reinforce male identity. Sexual abuse. One-third of my clients were sexually abused by older boys or men. It's a two-way correlation. Personal history of same-sex abuse. Victims of abuse later lobby for lower sexual age of consent. The temperamentally vulnerable boy. Introverted, artistic, perfectionistic, passive, timid, sensitive, internalizes criticism, interests, music, art, theater. Single mothers. Her additional burdens. Finding a father figure. Affirming son's masculinity, anger at boy's father, four stages of overcoming childhood gender identity problems, resistance, then apparent conformity, then secretive resistance, finally a working alliance. What is accomplished? Decreased effeminacy, increased self-esteem, increased maturity, diminished anxiety and depression, popularity with other boys, happy to be a boy, a future heterosexual life. When parents affirm child's sex-appropriate gender identity, when boy is comfortable as a male, he is more likely to be a heterosexual. Few long-term studies on childhood intervention, but there is reason for optimism. Benefits of treatment, diminished symptoms, healthier overall adjustment. Brief look at lesbianism. Three likely causes. Early infancy. Breach in mother-daughter bond. Gender identity phase. Girl rejects mother and identifies as father. In childhood, sexual molestation by male. Indications of lesbianism. Coming out. Lesbian friends, porn material, internet chat lines, gay clubs at school. Is this just a rebellious phase or a lesbian orientation? Search for identity, need for nurturing relationships with females. Bad news. Pro-gay message is promoted so teens come out at younger ages. About 50% refuse therapy. Good news. Parents are still able to make interventions. Role of therapist for teen. 
A therapist is not neutral, but neither is he agent of parents. Child's experience must be understood and reflected. Separate the emotional needs from the sexual. Explain the, that homosexuality is a reparative drive. Understand and value the need to feel close to and accepted by same-sex friends. Politics of Treatment, 1973. Homosexuality no longer a disorder. Now, childhood gender identity. Disturbance, still a disorder, but a forerunner to a non-disorder. Homosexuality, log logical inconsistency. Few therapists willing to treat GID labeled anti-homosexual promoter of gender stereotypes. Parental rights. Parents want heterosexuality for their children. Notes. How should we respond? Joe Dallas. Addressing the moral crisis in the church. Samson's example. Compromising the vow of separation. Regaining the credibility of consistency. Reestablishing con honesty and accountability in the local church. Addressing hostility toward homosexuals. Jonah's example. Preaching judgment without mercy. The church's attitude over the years. Reestablishing the credibility of service. Addressing the one-dimensional approach toward homosexuals. Responding to homosexual militants. Withstanding without attacking. Responding to more moderate homosexuals. Ambassadors. Responding to repentant homosexuals. Establishing ministries of redemption. Action points. Do encourage honesty and accountability in your local church. Don't resort to sarcasm or cheap shots when speaking against homosexuality. Be the first to speak up when someone refers to homosexuals in a profane or sarcastic way. Do send a note of appreciation to your pastor when he shows balance when referring to homosexuality. Don't be afraid to write letters to the editor of your local paper when articles about homosexuality appear. Give a clear, balanced presentation of the biblical position. Show your community it is possible to disagree without attacking. Do contact local ministries that offer help to repentant homosexuals. Offer to volunteer, give financial support, and encouragement. If there's no ministry in your area, pray about starting one. Hopeful resources for people who care about homosexuals. A Strong Delusion by Joe Dallas. An Ounce of Prevention by Don Schmerer. Broken Dreams. Journal of a Life Shattered by AIDS by Keith Awall and Karen Scalf Linneman. Coming Out of Homosexuality, New Freedom for Men and Women by Bob Davies and Lori Renzo. Homosexuality and the Politics of Truth by Jeffrey Santanover, M.D. How Should We Respond by Focus on the Family. Love One Out by John and Ann Polk. Mommy, Why Are They Holding Hands by Deborah Prehoda. Not Afraid to Change by John Polk. Reparative Therapy of Male Homosexuality by Joseph Nicolosi, Ph.D. Healing Homosexuality. Case Stories for Reparative Therapy. Working with Your School Committee by Nancy Sutton. You Don't Have to Be Gay by Jeff Conrad. Coming Out, Breaking Free from Homosexuality by Coral Ridge Ministries. Passage Out of Homosexuality. Stories of Transformation Through the Power of Jesus Christ. Reaching into the closet, understanding and responding to the unique challenges of evangelizing the homosexual. Someone I Love is Gay by Anita Worthen and Bob Davies. Other encouraging resources, Experiencing God Day by Day by Henry T. Blackity and Richard Blackaby. Family Walk Devotional Bible by Zondervan Publishing. When God Doesn't Make Sense by Dr. James Dobson, An Affair of the Mind. One Woman's Courageous Battle to Salvage Her Family from the Devastation of Pornography. Parents in Pain by John White, Overcoming the Hurt, the hurt and Frustration of Problem Children. Faith Building Resources, Faith in Young, young People, Amy and Jason, True True Stories Exposing the Truth About Gender Identity by Focus on the Family. Life on the Edge by Dr. James Dobson. No Apologies, The Truth About Life, Love, and Sex Focus on the Family, Preparing for Adolescence by Dr. James Dobson, Straight Answers by Focus on the Family, Forever Sex Without Regrets by Focus on the Family, Crossing the Line, The Power of Sexual Thoughts by Focus on the Family, Focus on the Family, Guiding Principles. We believe the ultimate purpose in living is to know and glorify God and to attain eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
And this was love one out. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Second Corinthians 5.17 Love one out. Presented by Focus on the Family.